We're getting into the climax of the show for today, and uh, we're going to be having the state of the Nigerian economy, uh, looking at the free fall of the Naira, and discussing this very sensitive topical issue with me. I have Vazum, the former Director General of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mines and Agriculture, and the person of Dr. John Esemede. Good morning, Dr. John. And I must say big thanks for uh, taking time to be patient with us uh, as we will be quickly uh, taking this discussion. Uh, looking at your bite, uh, your experience, uh, the worthy uh, knowledge you have about uh, all of this that has to do with uh, issues concerning the economy and how to manage it. We've been having worries. We've been having issues about the free fall of the Naira, you know, ever since they inception of the President Bola Tinibun's administration, uh, all that came, you know, some Nigerians are sharing uh, despondency rather than hope. Do you see hope in the ability of the current administration to change the narrative? Thank you very much for your question. The problem of the free fall of the Naira did not start to be started on the first day the Naira was introduced, on the 1st of January 1973. So when you say there is hope or no hope, the first question is that let us look at the historical perspective of where we are coming from. When we are using the pound shillings pence, it was 25 pence to one US dollar. Dollar is money, but it's not a legal tender. If you look at the entire scenario, what are you producing as a nation that you now want the dollar to be at par with the Naira? Our culture of borrowing, consuming, the import culture and all that, will not change the situation overnight. A country is supposed to be running on four legs. Monetary policy, fiscal policy, trade and planning. We got the whole thing wrong, mixed up. We came up with a policy of ban or non-allocation of forex, which in the first place should not be entertained or not known by the WTO. When we now said that the do dollar, there is no more dollar allocation for importation of certain items, this dollar was equally available in front of the central bank. So that was what created it problem and when they now came up with the measure or measure the two rates what of the source of the dollar what are we producing what are we exporting as a country because i've been export since 1985 for us to balance up we learn listen to imf we don't listen to experts like us if we now look at nigeria petroleum the whole thing started in 1908, 115 years. Nigeria is the only country in the world producing oil, but has no refining capacity. So how can you show up when you say certain decisions have been taken? What of agriculture? We were in Maputo in 2003. What was agreed that 20%, sorry, 15, 12% of our budget should be to run agriculture. We have three universities of agriculture. We are importing food. You are in Benin or you are in Abuja, go to uh, go to Naifo and see what is happening. So is it the two percent of budgetary allocation that we use to go like that? That is why we are importing food. But without one change the scenario, the last one is uh, sorry, solid minerals. We have 55. We cannot even contribute one percent to the GDP. And the new administration is looking at 50, 52 percent. And the mass importation of what we have today comes from China. The last one is services. We have sportsmen and women. We have engineers. We have professors all over the world. Look at how much the Indians and Chinese are remitting home under diaspora remittances. So what of our ambassadors? Who ordinarily is supposed to be the marketing manager of make the Nigerian products? What are they doing? That is why the president of Virginia said they should come back for the briefing. So when you now say the implication, it's so sad that prices of things will go up. There will be job losses. 
let's not deceive ourselves. Banks will continue to smile because what they do is that they finance mainly import, not agri -clothing. Factories will close down, we close down. Then we will now see more of Asian products in our own market. These are some of the things. When you now say there is hope, what structure do we have in place? Because we don't run an economy by faith. We don't run economy by just me talking like what I'm doing, or seminar and workshop, you know, to address. We run it by, uh, what do you call it, calculated strategy of 2 plus 2 equals 4. Thank okay, you. thank you, Dr. John Samede. Well, from what you've just said, uh, you seem to give impression that, well, there's more despondency yes. than there is hope. But uh, I know that there's no fast fix it or quick fix it to this whole issue. But let's look at the um, halting of the, you know, of the ban on some certain items like uh, the rice, uh, poultry products, cement. Uh, there was a halting of the eight-year ban of foreign exchange on these products alongside 40 other items by the present administration of President Bola Tinubu. Do you see this as a right step in the, in the right direction? I cannot easily tell you no because it's going to change a lot of things. In the first place, we are signatories to ECOWAS. That is why sometimes when you close borders, some of us begin to laugh because there are six type of borders in the world. The one we have in ECOWAS is just a simple border which you cannot close. We have signed the African Continental Free Trade. I, I started work on the African Continental Free Trade when I was in Unilever as head of export in Africa. And from that time to the present day, we have signed, we have ratified and so many other countries. What have we moved out of this country that we now say this? Then the last one is that how many agreements have we signed? There's what we call bilateral, multilateral and plurilateral. You cannot close, you cannot ban certain things. What you use under the C, part of the agreement we signed, even with some ECOWAS member is CET. You cannot close your border, you cannot ban because it's against the spirit of ECOWAS, so also that of the WTO. What you can use is tariff line or band lines. Because if you do that, other countries that work with a beggar than neighbor or the retaliatory measures. When you now place the, what the country did under MFLA was that non-allocation. But they left the side window. People were still having access to this foreign energy and that work created the gap. A lot of people are bad on agriculture. I don't know where you are. But in my own community and all that, is it possible to make 20% or 40% or 50% money by sitting in front of your house selling dollars and pounds? Have we not been to Ethiopia? Did I not work in Morocco and other that? Don't we have measures of controlling currency? Still, uh, schools here, apartment is a part of Nigeria where we are paid in dollars. Is that the situation in Brazil and all that? We mess up the whole system. It's not only the central bank or the government, because it was more profitable with a toy calculator, buying and selling of foreign currency than to be in active business. So it's not that there are no hungry fruits. It takes only three months to produce rice, sorry, to produce beans, vegetable 28 days and all that. We are not talking of palm produce and so many other things. There is hope, but I cannot see that, uh, I cannot see that uh, template or the KPI and all that that will be out of this wood in um, a, 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 a few days or a few months. We are still importing. And if we are importing, we are not even talking of backward in, integration, import substitution, and building of capacity. Where are the institutions? Which university today, which technical college, or which uh, research center is attached to farmers, or seedlings, or production? Those, things, those are the gaps we are seeing. It's not that making my pronouncement. What happened when we talk of the swap? When we could not pay the airlines, the embassies could not remit their money home, we said swap, which was one-sided. Where are we on it? We are still owing a lot of people in one way or the other. And if you think that the dollar will be one or 50 in under two, three months, I think I don't see that possibility because there is no structure on ground. For us, for mass production, and that's for balance of trade, balance of payment. Thank you. 
Let's look at the statement credited to uh, the president of the IMF, you know, where uh, she said, a lot needs to be done in terms of strengthening the fallen Naira. And also said that uh, Nigeria will be welcomed to uh, borrow uh, more money in order to strengthen the Naira if uh, Nigeria considers that option. So let's look at the aspect of borrowing. Uh, what is your urge for the government under President Bola Tinobu? Do you support the act of borrowing in strengthening our Naira? The answer is capital no. Oh. The, the IMF is out for their own businesses. Where was the IMF, IMF in 1972 when the dollar, sorry, when the Naira was devalued by 50%? We, we were told in 1972-73 that the Naira was overvalued. That's why it was devalued by 50%. By 1974... Okay, we sincerely apologize. Um, uh, former DG Nasima, uh, Dr. Johnny Semede, we will be having you extend the frontiers of that uh, analysis after this time out as we take a very short break after we will come back to you to stay. TMI, every opinion counts. Thank you for staying with us uh, while we had that break. We were opportuned, uh, before the break, we were opportuned to enjoy the analysis of the former Director General of NASIMA in the person of Dr. John Isamede. Okay, back to you, Dr. John Isamede. Over the issue of borrowing, you did say and clarify that uh, you do not subscribe to the government borrowing. Continue from where you left off. Oh, thank you. How much is Nigeria borrowing? To, how much is Nigeria owing today? Most local and international debts. The Madam at the TMO happened to be my classmate or classmate. And some of us are privileged based on the position and what we've done in the past. You have dreadful, certain information. If IMF said we are at liberty to borrow, it's their own business. It's like going to a beer parlor. Even when you're on the floor, the, first, the lady or the man selling is would be looking to beyond it is our own target. Countries that are owing, when you go there, you see infrastructure. If I'm in London, I can leave this morning. Within two hours, I, I'm in Newcastle. How many hours from Benin to Lagos? When I was a student in Unipen, we used to live here in the 80s, get to Benin, receive your lectures and come back. Even the railway line, the one in Lagos, the federal did not collect the state. So also there's bound to be problem. The one in Redasa did not collect. So if I am IMF, say we should go and borrow, how are we going to pay back when factories have been closed down? When people no longer go to farm for one reason or the other. When it's now more profitable to sell dollar pounds, so I am happy. Well, thank you very much, uh, John Esamede. You, 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 you've already made your statement clear as yes, regards sir. borrowing. But let's look at this other aspect concerning yes, borrowing. Sir. We've Nigeria always... Nigeria can you hear me? IMF cannot give all the same restriction. What is given to Nigeria is given to Ghana, given to South Korea. We saw the problem in Brazil, how they were able to overcome. We saw it in Thailand, too, also in um, Argentina. Why is Nigeria... Because from April to the present day, the exchange of between the dollar and the pound has moved from around three, sorry, four to five hundred to over one thousand two hundred. This was a currency that was fifty kobo when I was a, a youth copper. So also Abaja tried, then Abaja tried to merge in nineteen ninety three of the official rate and the black market rate. What happened? Because as long as we allow our currency to be on the streets. For CBN to be telling us that we have I and E window, only one exchange rate, which I can give you 12. Even if they are 50, you license the bureau they join. You came out, you close the bureau they join and all that, and you allow those on the streets. How can we have peace? Are we now going to borrow for consumption, buying exotic cars, and for few privileged people where we are not even supporting agriculture, the infrastructure is not there, we don't have a national carrier. The port is not configured to do export. Africa continental free trade is only on paper. ECOWAS is only 5%. We have recorded since 1975. We have a lot of things to do internally instead of listening to IMF. 
Okay, Dr. John Isimede, uh, I don't know if you listened to the president in, in one of the speeches he made to, uh, the, to Nigerians concerning what he has to do in terms of the template he raised that he should be judged by between now and March next year. He did say that he's going to be looking into investing into you know, the manufacturing sector and 75 billion naira you know, is going into that. And the small scale uh, medium enterprises, small and medium scale enterprises, I beg your pardon. Uh, he also said that he's going to uh, you know, also throw some, some loan amount into that in order to strengthen this. If you heard that speech, I don't know if you see the speech of the president in terms of the template he created that he will be judged by between now and next year. Don't you see that as uh, a healthy development if he puts it to uh, practicality? Thank you very much. I saw it. But in Nigeria, more emphasis on the multinational organizations. The multinational organizations are not your friends, neither mine. They are here because of the 200 million Nigerians and the vast market. They can come in today, put on pioneer status, and leave tomorrow. What is driving the economy of Brazil, where you are getting sugar from, is the SME. What is dri driving the economy of China, India, Thailand, Malaysia, that we are getting palm oil and all that from, is SME. What is the focus of the SME? Even if we focus on the SME, at what rate are they taking the loans? Because most of the goods you see in the market today, from India and China, Turkey and all that, are being supported by the Asian Bank of those countries. What are we getting from our own bank or the Asian Bank of Nigeria? So when you now talk of Afrasim, Afrasim is the VAT for supporting import and export into payments. Hmm. Is Afrasim the Central Bank of Africa? If we now say one payment system in Africa, where is the Central Bank? Where is the clearing house? And so also, if I buy things from uh, Zambia, and they are going to pay me in Naira based on what I did with Ghana in 1995. What if there is devaluation at one point is the exporter that suffered? If I now export things to Ghana, and by the time the goods get there, the city is depleted, we do not tell me to amend my essay. These are things we should look at internally, they are experts to solve the problem of Nigeria. If you are putting A, B, C, D, given to the manufacturers, given to this, where are the infrastructure? What of the three levels of government in Nigeria, where you have federal, state, and local government, what we see is taxation. Which incentive are we getting from them? So if the president gives one billion to one SME or one company, and is cleared halfway by taxation and all that, there's no working capital, we will remain where we are. Do we give our own local people tax holidays? We give multinational tax holidays. We give international company tax holidays. There is no level playing field. These are some of the things we should equally look at. What are the raw materials? What is taking the care of Nigeria in one importation of petroleum products, which we are not still comfortable with because it's tied to the US dollar? Then the second one, importation of gas. What happened to Koyo? Hmm. In 1990, I was among those who were exporting Koyo gas out of Nigeria because Abdul Salam, who was in Kaduna, was my contemporary. We were sending cars from here to Chad, to Niger, to Ghana, and all that. Today, we are importing second-hand cars. What was that in the, uh, what was Leyland in Ibado? The three blacks in Ibado. Uh, sir, in uh, Ibadu, where are they today? These are the things that are taking our money. Let us look inwards. Even if we have to introduce bicycles for certain categories of people. We saw it in Netherlands. We saw it in China, in Thailand, and all that. It's not having cars. Then, if we have buses and good train, uh, railway system, we will. I can tell you that it is cheaper to bring a container from India, from China, from Canada to Lagos than to move that container from my papa to my two. <laughs> so these are the things. How can you compete? So it's not the president giving us money. Let, let us look at the environment. Is the environment suitable? Where are people going to Benin Republic to export their goods? because of the policy of the central bank, that whatever you bring into the country has to be on CIF, and at the end of the day, you pay duty and all that. What all right. you bring it? All right, thank, thank you very much for that robust uh, articulation on that. But before I let you go, I want to comment on the 
fear subsidiary mover. The pains that the people, Nigerians, are presently going through. Uh, do you have, do you see this as having a relationship with the free fall of the Naira? Yes, thank you very much. Even as you are sitting down there, you have a budget. Your budget could be a, a monthly basis, quarterly or yearly. It came as a big surprise because most companies in Nigeria have already signed out their budget for the year. We were not to it just came in as a thunder and cleared the manufacturing, sorry, the, the risk sector. In the sense that the budget of four or five hundred per litre suddenly moved to what? Where are you going to get the money from? And not only that, Mr. President could have been able to talk to the organized private sector. Then we look at the low hanging fruit. What has happened to the Dangote? Uh, uh, refinery. I was part of that. I was part of that team for five years, so I can't go into that. Finally, where are the refineries not working? The oil in India was opened in 1901. That refinery is still on. I've seen refineries over a hundred years in Brazil. Why is our refinery not working? We could have been, we could have waited for two or three months, fix these refineries and said uh, for it at any rate, uh, at any rate, then Nigeria will be comfortable with it. We know how much is going in order in our neighboring country. But there are structures in place, not the way we pay taxes here, where we are being driven here and there, clamp our cars and all that because, uh, because the government is desperately looking for money. Thank you very much, Dr. John Esemede. Quite a robust time, and we really appreciate you, and we can only say we wish you a beautiful day ahead of you. Thanks for taking time to be part of this discussion. And that's all we have on that segment with Dr. John Esemeda. We'll take a short break after which we continue.